When working with physical phenomenon, it's often extremely helpful to draw a diagram to represent what's happening. We found this to be true in kinematics, dynamics, projectiles, momentum, and even energy. This is at least as true when we're dealing with waves and optics, possibly even more so. So we've begun our discussion about waves already, but it's a good time to overview how we can represent these waves. In fact, we can represent these waves in a lot of ways. When we defined wave properties in interference, we found it useful to draw our waves from a side view, like this. How you might see them if you were watching waves pass by a porthole in a boat. When we talked about diffraction and Doppler effects and such, we often drew waves from more of a top point of view, just showing the crests of the waves as they were all moving together in a particular direction. This is much like you'd see a wave in the ocean if you flew over. As we've seen, both of these representations are very useful. Unfortunately, neither of these are very handy if we're talking about how waves bounce off a mirror or go through a lens. The diagrams are just a bit too messy for these circumstances. Now for these circumstances we use a third way to represent the waves. Rays. That is, little arrows pointing in the direction in which the waves are moving, like this. Or this, or simply this. For drawing ray diagrams, Here's two tips to help get you going. First, when drawing a reflection off a mirror, for instance, you can draw the incoming wave like this. Then the outgoing set of waves, that is the reflection, as an arrow moving away from the mirror. Now, for a reflection, the incoming and outgoing angles to the normal are going to be the same. Hint number two. When working on a problem where you're asked about what a person might see, remember to start the rays at the object and end at the person's eyes. Remember that viewing is simply detecting the light that has been reflected off the item we're looking at. We know that, but sometimes it can be forgotten when we're working on ray diagrams. If you're considering the visibility in a reflection of a whole object, consider both extreme ends as you draw the rays, leading back to the viewer's eyes. Okay, so to summarize, we've considered three ways of representing waves here. The first was a side view, and this is convenient for demonstrating basic wave characteristics, the peaks and the troughs and the wavelength and so on. Then we looked at a top view, and we found that that's pretty handy for considering how groups of waves interact. The third way we looked at here is rays. And that's the nice way to consider the path in which groups of waves are moving when we're looking at refraction and reflection, which is going to be the main topics coming up. So we'll be using rays quite a bit here.